In this video, I'll work through two examples of finding extreme values, that is, maximum values and minimum values of functions. In the first example, we're asked to find the absolute maximum and minimum values for this rational function g of x on the interval from 0 to 4. These maximum and minimum values could occur at critical numbers in the interior of the interval, or they could occur at the endpoints of the interval. So we'll need to check the critical numbers and check the endpoints and compare our values. To find the critical numbers, those are the numbers where g prime of x is equal to 0 or does not exist. So let's take the derivative, g prime of x, using the quotient rule. We get x squared plus x plus 2 squared on the denominator, and then we have low times d high, the derivative of the numerator is 1, minus high times the derivative of the denominator, that's 2x plus 1. Before we figure out where that 0 or doesn't exist, let's simplify it a little bit. So we can multiply out the numerator. I'll distribute the negative sign. And I'll add together like terms in the numerator. I'm just leaving the denominator alone on all these steps. So our simplified numerator is going to be minus x squared plus 2x plus 3. Now that I've simplified the derivative, I can figure out where it's equal to 0 and where it doesn't exist. Let me clear a little space. Now the only way that g prime of x could not exist is if the denominator is 0. But on our interval, where x is between 0 and 4, x squared plus x plus 2 is always greater than or equal to 2, so the denominator is never 0 on this interval. In fact, it turns out that x squared plus x plus 2 is never 0, even if we look outside this interval. And you can check that if you want to using the quadratic formula. But in any case, we don't have to worry about the places where g prime of x does not exist, so we only have to worry where g prime of x is equal to 0. To find where g prime of x is equal to 0, we just have to check where the numerator is equal to 0. So I'll set negative x squared plus 2x plus 3 equal to 0. If I multiply both sides there by negative 1 and the factor, I get that x equals 3 or x equals minus 1. So these are my critical numbers, but notice that one of these critical numbers, negative 1, doesn't even lie within my interval, so I don't have to worry about it. All I have to worry about is x equals 3 x equals 3 is one place where my function g could have an absolute maximum or minimum. So let's figure out g's value there by plugging in 3 for x. That evaluates to 2 fourteenths or 1 seventh. So we've checked the critical numbers. Now let's go ahead and check the endpoints. Those are the, point, the x values of 0 and 4 since our interval is from 0 to 4. Plugging in, we get that g of 0 is negative 1 half, and g of 4 is 3 20 seconds. I sometimes like to make a table of all these candidate values. The candidate x values are 0, 3, and 4, and the corresponding g of x values we found were negative 1 half, 1 seventh, and 3 20 seconds. Now to find the absolute maximum and minimum values, all I have to do is figure out which one of these y values is the biggest and which is the smallest. Well, clearly, negative 1 half is the smallest, so that's the absolute minimum value. And we just need to compare 1 seventh and 3 twenty seconds to see which is bigger. Now, 1 seventh is the same as 3 twenty firsts, which is going to be bigger than 3 twenty seconds. So 1 half, 1 seventh is our absolute max value. We can confirm this by looking at a graph of our function g. Remember, we're just interested in the interval from 0 to 4, so we're just interested in this section of the graph. And it does look like the minimum value is here at when x equals 0, a minimum value of negative 1 half, like we found. And the maximum value, well, 
I'm not sure exactly where it is from this graph, but it does look like it's somewhere around 3, and that is a value of something around 1 7th. So the graph does confirm what we found as a more precise answer using calculus. For the next example, let's find the absolute extreme values for the function f of x, which is the absolute value of x minus x squared, on the interval from negative 2 to 2. As before, we can find absolute extreme values by checking first the critical numbers and then also the endpoints of the interval, negative 2 and 2. To find the critical numbers, we need to take the derivative of our function. But because our function involves an absolute value, it's a little tricky to take the derivative. Instead, let's first rewrite f using piecewise notation. Recall that if we're looking at the absolute value of x, when x is bigger than or equal to 0, absolute value of x is just x. So f of x will be x minus x squared. On the other hand, when x is less than 0, the absolute value of x is negative x, so f of x will be negative x minus x squared. Now, to take the derivative, we can take the derivative of each piece. So when x is bigger than 0, I don't want to take the derivative when x equals 0 because there might be funny things happening, you know, a cusp or a corner. So I'm just going to worry about when x is bigger than 0 and when x is less than 0 for now. When x is bigger than 0, I can just use the power rule I get 1 minus 2x as the derivative. When x is less than 0, I get negative 1 minus 2x. And now to find where I have critical numbers, I need to find where f prime of x is equal to 0 or f prime of x does not exist. Well, f prime of x equals 0, where 1 minus 2x equals 0 for x bigger than 0, and where 1 negative 1 minus 2x is equal to 0 for x less than 0. So that corresponds to x equal 1 half for x bigger than 0 and x equals negative 1 half for x less than 0. So those are my first two critical numbers. Notice they do lie within my interval that I'm interested in. But I also have to worry about where f prime of x does not exist and the candidate x value for that is where x equals 0. One way to convince ourselves that the derivative does not exist when x equals 0 is to look at the fact that the derivative is very close to 1 for x values very close to 0 from the right side and very close to negative 1 for x values from the left side. So the graph of the function is going to have to be sloping down with a slope near negative 1 for x less than 0 and up with a slope near 1 for x greater than 0, and so it'll end up having a cusp or corner there. Also, notice that even if I weren't 100% sure that the derivative didn't exist at x equals 0, it's not going to hurt to consider this x equals 0 as a possible additional candidate for the absolute max or min value. So I've got my three critical numbers, and my endpoints are just going to be x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. So let me make a chart of values. My x values to consider are negative 2, negative 1 half, 0, 1 half, and positive 2. And my corresponding f of x values are, are going to be, let's see, absolute value of negative 2 minus negative 2 squared works out to 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. If I plug in negative 1 half, I get 1 half minus 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth. Plug in 0, I get 0. And plugging in 1 half, I get 1 fourth. And plugging in 2, I get negative 2 again. So now my biggest value is going to be 1 fourth. So that's my absolute max value. And my smallest value is going to be negative 2. So that's my absolute min value. I can confirm what I found looking at a graph. So here I've graphed my function y equals absolute value of x minus x squared on the interval from negative 2 to 2. And I can see, indeed, that my absolute min is going to be a value of negative 2. It occurs at two absolute minimum points. And my absolute maximum is going to be a value of about 1 fourth and that occurs at two absolute maximum points. And that concludes this video on finding extreme values.